to BizTech's Apex Cybersecurity Show. Today we have Christoph Barrell. He's the Managing Director, APAC at FS ISAC. Uh, founded in 1999, FS ISAC is a member-driven, not-for-profit organization that advances cybersecurity and resilience in the global financial system, protecting financial institutions and the people they serve. Now, headquartered in the US, the organization has offices in the UK and Singapore, and member firms number more than 5,000 and represent more than 100 trillion in assets and is represented in more than 70 countries. Now, to tell us more, welcome to the show, Christoph. Thank you, Boyan. It's great to be here. Now, um, as a not for profit, FS Isaac, um, Tell us, Christoph, about your mission and your role within the company. Um, I mean, you're right. We're the global cyber intelligence sharing community uh, solely focused on financial services, right? Uh, so again, it's very important, member-driven, not-for-profit, uh, core mission to uh, protect the financial uh, sector and really advance cybersecurity and uh, resilience. Um, so just towards um, on the region. So we operate in Singapore, there's the HQ for um, APAC. Uh, we've had um, our office here since 2017 uh, with the strong support of uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, we also operate in Australia, Japan and uh, India. So that's, uh, that's about us and yes, our members from the financial sector, uh, banks, insurance companies, payment, uh, fintech and more. So um, I'm the head of APAC. I head up um, our strategy in the region and, and our operations here. Um, I oversee member engagement and growth uh, of FSI SAC's uh, presence in the region. And I work uh, closely uh, with key public and private stakeholders. Now, for a start, can you give us some insights into 2023 and the cyber landscape, which has seen acceleration in terms of cyber attacks around the world. Yeah, you're right, Brian. I mean, in 2023, uh, we observed a few key trends uh, in the global cyber threat landscape, like um, DDoS, ransomware, social engineering tactics, uh, getting increasingly sophisticated, uh, the enduring threat of third party and supply chain risk. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, the impact of AI in cybersecurity. Uh, and quantum computing as well, and its implications uh, for cybersecurity uh, in financial services. And uh, I'm going to briefly mention, uh, if you don't mind, Brian, uh, 2023 report from IBM that uh, basically stated that the average total cost of a data breach is about 4.5 million USD. Uh, and the global cost of cybercrime, uh, you know, are projected to reach about uh, 10 trillion USD per year by next year, by 2025, calling for more and better uh, cybersecurity measures. The APAC region, um, you know, faced the, the highest number of cyber attacks, um, accounting for a bit more than 30% uh, of uh, all reported incidents ahead of um, Europe and North America. So this is interesting. There seems to be then with that 30%, that's a disproportionate number in Asia compared to the rest of the world, given its size. What do you think that's attributed to? There are a number of reasons, but you know, that sort of, um, uh, you know, gives me uh, a chance to also tell you about uh, what's going to happen in 2024, uh, okay. or at least what our experts, you know, think about uh, the landscape for, you know, this year. And we, we foresee a range of challenges in APAC specifically, but not just in the region, uh, with, you know, some of the trending cybersecurity threats that I just mentioned from, from last year, uh, and we expect them to continue to grow in 2024. So first on, on AI, um, cyber criminals are leveraging the potential of AI to um, automate and refine their techniques, elevating the complexity of their attacks. 
so last year, FSI SAC set up a, a new working group focused on AI risk, uh, which has been working on a series of white papers exploring uh, challenges and risk, uh, but also opportunities uh, of using AI for cyber defense. And you know, this group consists of experts uh, at our member financial firms around the world. Uh, also includes uh, APAC and you know they collaborate to share uh, best practices and, and create um, industry source guidance. We take a, a holistic approach uh, including you know creating a framework uh, of an acceptable use policy for external uh, Gen AI uh, or a paper on ethics considerations for leveraging the power of AI within firms. Uh, second and that was you know, big one for APAC um, as well. And again, I, I'm speaking on behalf of FSI SAC and, you know, on a, on a global uh, level, ransomware uh, and their increased uh, sophistication. So, you know, today ransomware is accessible to nearly anyone, Brian, right? Any would be uh, cyber criminal. Uh, we can buy kits of the dark web uh, without any technical know-how required. So, you know, cyber criminals are now employing what we call a, a double extortion process uh, in which victims are first forced to pay uh, one ransom to unlock data and another one to prevent data from being sold or um, released to outside parties. And, and I'm sure you heard about Lockbit as well. Yeah. You know, typically that's the, uh, you know, big uh, ransomware group that operates on a ransomware as a service model uh, where interested parties pay a deposit um, for custom attacks uh, and profits are made uh, through an affiliate um, framework. And in 2023, in fact, Logbit was involved in more cyber attacks than any other ransomware actor. Uh, and so they became the most uh, active globally, demanding an average I think that's huge. Um, ransom of nearly one million US dollar per incident, right? Third, uh, on social engineering tactics and you know attacks in general, um, as Gen AI tools advance, um, attackers can now build decoys that are almost impossible for even the most vigilant person to catch, uh, with the use of excellent AI translation tools. Um, image generation and also deep fakes. And, you know, I really think that organizations must proactively adapt their strategies in the face of this technological um, arms race. Okay. I was so talking about- How do we do that? How do, okay, so as an FI or in fact any sector, how right. do we prepare and protect ourselves from these evolving challenges and and on our side, then obviously it's an arms race, as you said. The bad guys You're have right. this technology. The good guys also have AI and quantum computing to help to to combat this these bad guys. So what do we need to do as yeah. as, as, as financial institutions as well as you know as the broader industry as a whole? No, it's a good question, Brian. Thanks for that. Um, you know what measures can organizations take to enhance their? I would say protection against cyber attacks right first i think it's quite classic a lot of um you know um, organizations now engage in staff training so firms can establish comprehensive training programs to enhance um, staff um, cyber awareness enabling them to identify phishing attempts i think we all uh, got that and stop um, social engineering tactics and by conducting regular training sessions, organizations empower their workforce to um, proactively defend against potential cyber threats, creating a more robust line of defense. And Christoph, I want to just stop you here. Because sure. Basically, a lot of times what people don't realize at senior management level is the point of failure is often the human. It is not the technology. The person is the point of failure. So training our workforce and people and also then preparing them to drills is a way to really make ourselves more cyber resilient. You're right. That's, uh, that's critical indeed. And in fact, you know, staff can also try to stay ahead, you know, uh, of what's, what's going on, especially in the uh, range of emerging tech, you know, and their security challenges, right? It's, uh, it's really important, um, you know, 
especially with regards to post-quantum cryptography, uh, PQC, and, and the misuse of uh, AI in cyber attacks. So by really staying, I think, uh, updated on these potential threats, um, organizations can enhance their preparedness um, and even develop effective countermeasures uh, and also adapt their cybersecurity strategies to address you know, those uh, challenges posed by advancing technologies. There's another one, which is, uh, I think, quite obvious, especially if, uh, you know, um, security and um, information technology, uh, people are listening to us here. Regular software and system updates, uh, they're also very important, right? Um, remaining vigilant about software vendor security updates uh, ensures that uh, security patches are promptly applied. Um, and this proactive approach, I think it's very important to be proactive. Um, this enhances the um, overall resilience of an organization's cybersecurity uh, infrastructure. So that's the last one here on cyber resilience. I think that's a buzzword, Brian, right? Absolutely. Um, now, I know the, that... and, and so here's the thing, right? You're an industry body. You have 5,000 members. That's right. Um, what are you doing? to help your members in 2024 better protect themselves and also have better information sharing? Sure. I mean, I can share uh, a few ideas that have worked and, and continue to work for um, our members. And the first one is um, participating in cybersecurity exercises. And, you know, they're crucial for building cyber resilience uh, because they enable organizations to identify vulnerabilities. That's one, uh, test the effectiveness of incident response plans, uh, enhance the skills of their cybersecurity teams, and they also help building the, you know, the muscle memory for responding to threats. We, um, in fact, we run our own exercises, but we also participate in external ones, like the annual uh, NATO's Lock Shields, where uh, FSI SAC led the financial sector uh, in 2023. Another one is ongoing risk assessment. I think that's uh, equally important, you know, um, assessment of external and um, internal dependencies by identifying, evaluating and monitoring potential threats uh, and addressing security gaps. The third one is, um, I think, via adopting a zero trust model and mentality. Uh, we talk more and more about zero trust, right? Yeah. So that one, the point is, uh, I'm sure you know, deny access to applications and data by default, uh, granting access uh, only through MFA typically and, you know, risk-based uh, verifications. And cyber resilience can be adopted through a, a cyber resilient mindset, like, for example, in the boardroom, right? It's very important to do that shift. Uh, by prioritizing cyber risk, fostering resilience through active engagement in cyber discussions and also uh, proactive support for security measures. Now, you had a very good point here, Christophe, and you have that lens across Asia Pacific. Can I ask you, since you, uh, FSISAC has started in Asia, I think in 2017, when That's you right. started, have you seen a shift in the attention that boardrooms are now placing on cybersecurity? We saw a shift, definitely. And, and we also see uh, more and more discussions, um, you know, uh, in relation to uh, boardroom engagement. Uh, there are more and more consulting companies as well uh, that are, you know, working in that space, advising, recommending uh, boards and cybersecurity firms. So definitely a shift. Yes, this has happened and it's not going to stop, which I think is, is great news. Now, on that note, Christophe, it's been a fascinating conversation. I've actually learned a lot it's just uh, as a great quick update in 2024. But before we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to leave the audience with? I think the, the most important is really around cyber resilience. I, I mentioned it, right? Uh, it's really to keep firms and their customers' data safe. Uh, it's, it must be a priority for a sector like financial services, really. Now, Christophe, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Thank you, Ryan. It was a pleasure. Now, we've been speaking to Christophe Burrell, the Managing Director, APAC, at FS ISAC. 
I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to BizTech's APAC Cybersecurity Show. This show will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in.